I wanted to ask about the U.S. role in all of this, and let's turn to a recording of President Richard Nixon speaking in a March 1972 phone call, acknowledging he'd given instructions, quote, to do anything short of a Dominican-type action to keep the elected president of Chile, Salvador Allende, from assuming office. The phone conversation was captured by the, his secret Oval Office taping system. In this clip, you hear President Nixon tell, telling his press secretary, Ron Ziegler, he had given orders to undermine Chilean democracy to the U.S. ambassador. But, quote, he just failed. He should have kept Allende from getting in. Listen closely. Yeah. Mr. Ziegler. Yes, sir. What did you, have you said anything, Ron, with regard to the uh, ITT in Chile? How did you handle uh, uh, The State Department did, dealt with that today. Oh, they did? Yes, sir. What did they do? Deny it? Uh, they uh, denied it, uh, but they were cautious on how they dealt with the Corey statement because they were afraid that might backfire. Why would Corey say? Well, Corey said that he had received instructions uh, uh, to uh, do anything short of uh, uh, a... Dominican type uh, alleged to have said that. Or he did? Right. So what, how did how that get out? He put that out? Well, uh, Anderson received that from some source. Al Haig is sitting with me now. Oh, yeah. It was a report contained in an IT and T. Um, oh yeah. Thing, but well, he was he was instructed to. Well, but I hope. To, but he just failed. Son of <laughs> that's his main problem. He should have kept Allende from getting in. Well, in any event, State has State denied Department it today, and they referred to to your uh, comments about Latin America and Chile. Uh, yeah, fine. And uh, so you just refer to that on that one. Fine. Okay. Yes, sir. That's President Nixon speaking in 1972. Peter Kornblu of the National Security Archive. Can you explain to us what Nixon's talking about here and put it in context of the U.S. role in destabilizing Chile? Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger launched a preemptive strike against Salvador Allende. They decided to uh, stop him from being inaugurated as president of Chile. Um, he hadn't even set foot in the Moneda Palace uh, uh, when uh, Nixon and Kissinger just simply uh, decided to change the fate of, of, of Chile. Um, Nixon instructed the CIA to make the Chilean economy scream, to use as many men as possible. Um, the first plan was to actually keep Allende from being inaugurated as, uh, as president. And then when that plan failed after, uh, after the assassination of the Chilean commander-in-chief that the United States was behind, General Rene Schneider, um, Kissinger then went to Nixon and said, Allende is now president. The State Department thinks we can coexist with him, but I want you to make sure you tell everybody in the U.S. government that we cannot, that we cannot let him succeed because he has legitimacy. He's democratically elected. And suppose other governments decide to follow in his footsteps, like a government like Italy. What are we going to do then? What are we going to say when other countries start to democratically elect? other Salvador Allende's. We will, the, ba the world balance of power will change, he wrote to Nixon in a secret document, and our interest in it will be changed fundamentally. Talk about Kissinger's role. Most recently, um, people may have seen uh, Stephen Colbert dancing around him. Uh, um, the uh, Henry Kissinger, of course, still alive, considered an elder statesman by most of the press in the United States. Give us a thumbnail sketch of his role. I just got back from, from Chile, and, and I, I did a number of TV shows there, and everybody said, we're trying to hold our own people accountable here for the atrocities that took place during the Pinochet regime. But why isn't Henry Kissinger being held accountable? Why isn't the United States held accountable for the role that they played in the atrocities that were committed in Chile, starting with the coup itself and then going on with the repression that, that, that followed? And Kissinger really is the, the, not only the key survivor of the policymaking team of that era, but truly, when you go through the declassified documents that are laid out in the book, The Pinochet File, you see that he is the singular most important figure in engineering the policy to overthrow Allende and then, even more, to embrace Pinochet and the human rights violations that followed. Um, he had aides who were saying to him, it's unbecoming for the United States to intervene in a country where, where we are not, our national security interests are not threatened. And he's Push them away. Nope, we can't. We can't let this imitative phenomena. We have to stop by end of him being successful. He had aides that came to him the day after the coup and said, "I'm getting reports that there's 10,000 bodies in the streets 
people are being slaughtered. And he said, go tell Congress that this new military regime is better for our interests than the old government in Chile. And we have this fabulous document of him talking to Pinochet, a meeting in 1976, in which his aides have told him, you should tell Pinochet to stop violating human rights. And instead, he says to Pinochet, you did a great service to the West in overthrowing Allende. We want to support you, not hurt you. Um, in the Pinochet file, uh, you quote an assessment by the CIA's Directorate of Operations, uh, who advised President Nixon and Henry Kissinger on covert um, action in Chile. He argued that, far from being a pawn of the communists, Allende would, quote, be hard for the Communist Party and for Moscow to control. He also said covert operations to stop Allende from becoming president would be, quote, worse than useless. Any indication that we are behind a legal Mickey Mouse or some hard nose play, exacerbate relations even further. I'm afraid we'll be repeating the errors we made in 59 and 60 when we drove Fidel Castro into the Soviet camp. You also quote Kissinger's top aide on Latin America, Viren Vaki, who wrote in a top-secret cable, it's far from given that wisdom would call for covert action programs. The consequences could be disastrous. The cost-benefit-risk ratio is not favorable, Peter Kornbrand. That's my point. There were people inside the U.S. government pressing Kissinger not to take this course. And he uh, completely shunted them aside, pushed Nixon forward to as aggressive but covert a policy as, as possible, to make Allende fail, to destabilize Allende's ability to govern, to create what Kissinger called a coup climate. In the new edition of the Pinochet file, we have the actual transcript of Nixon and Kissinger's conversation, their first phone conversation after the coup took place in which Nixon says to Kissinger, well, our hand doesn't show in this one, does it? Uh, and Kissinger said, we didn't do it, referring to direct participation in the coup. Um, we helped them. He says, I mean, we helped them. Blank, which I'm sure is a reference to the CIA, created the conditions as best as possible. And this is the first conversation between Nixon and Kissinger after the coup. They just, they're basically laying out the role of the United States in setting, creating a coup climate in Chile, facilitating the coup. But it's even worse. Um, this was long before your program existed, but Richard Nixon is already complaining about the liberal crap in the media. And Kissinger says, yeah, the, liberal, the, the media is bleeding because, uh, because a, a communist government was overthrown, they, you know, like as if the media is on the side of, 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 of Allende. They're, they're focusing on the atrocities that are taking place. And Kissinger says, in the Eisenhower period, we would be heroes.